Hello everyone and welcome back to another video by Ian Talk. As always, I'm your host Ian, and today we've got this year's version of the best movies of the first half of the year video. This is the third annual best movies of the first half of the year video, and every time I make this content, it blows my mind how fast time has passed. I mean, can you believe we're already past the halfway mark of the year? It's incredible how fast time has been passing, and each time I've made this video, it's great to see the world going slowly but surely back to normal. Theaters have been opening back up to the full, and most of the restrictions have been lifted. There are many amazing looking K-movies upcoming in the latter half of the year that I'm very excited for, such as Decision to Leave and Emergency Declaration. But before we anticipate what's to come, in this video, let's take a look and appreciate the great Korean movies that already came out thus far. I'll be going over all the K-movies that I watched and reviewed that were released in 2022 and ranking them from the worst to the best. I've watched a total of 12 movies that were released from January to June 2022, and I'll link the reviews to the movies in the descriptions down below if you want to check out the full reviews. I'll just be giving a brief explanation and review of the movies in this video. Please remember, this list will be based on my personal preferences and are totally biased towards my opinions. That being said, this video may be on the longer side, so grab a drink and snack and settle in as I introduce to you the movies that released this year so far and how good they were. Starting off the list, the number 12 movie of the first half of 2022 was the erotic Korean film that released in February, Serve the People. Directed by Chang Chor Su, the director of Secretly Greatly and The Devil, Serve the People was a highly erotic film that starred the likes of Yeonu Jin, Ji Yan, and Cho Seung Ah. Not the most flashy cast, but still actors that you've probably seen in smaller roles in other productions. And because this is a very sexual film with lots of erotic scenes, the movie is, of course, rated 18+. The synopsis is as follows. Mu Guang is a model soldier that took on the role of a private chef of the division commander. His one and only goal in life was to provide for his wife and child. Then, one day, the division commander leaves on a business trip, and that's when the dangerous temptation begins. The young wife of the division commander, Su Ryeon, comes on to Mu Guang, seducing him and conflicting his goals and beliefs. Will Mu Guang be able to keep his morals, or will he fall for the seduction and temptation of the commander's wife? risking his military role, relation with his family, and basically his entire life. Overall, Serve the People was a highly sensual movie with a unique tone to it. It had its own atmosphere, but it also had its own flaws as well. Maybe because the focus was too much on the intimate scenes and less the narrative, but the movie wasn't very satisfying for me personally. I gave Serve the People a ticket price value of $8. Next, the number 11 movie is the comedic drama that was released in April of this year, titled Stellar. Stellar was directed by Kwon Soo Kyung, who also directed My Unknowing Brother and starred the likes of Son Ho Jun, Lee Gi Young, and Ho Song Tae. No, the lineup didn't have the most A-list actors, but they definitely didn't disappoint. The film was a comedic drama that had me chuckling throughout and also gave an attempt in the emotional department as well. The detailed synopsis is as follows. Youngbae is an ace salesman in the vehicle collateral industry who's been living an enjoyable life. But one day, the supercar entrusted by the boss, Mr. Seo, for one night disappears when Youngbae's so-called best friend, Dong Sik, runs off with the vehicle, and Youngbae takes the blame and starts to be chased by Mr. Seo's gang as the culprit. With no one to trust and nowhere to hide, Youngbae runs into his father's old car, the 1987 Stellar. With a top speed of just 50 km per hour, and only 3 hours left to find the supercar, Youngbae must find Dong Sik in the boss's supercar with his only hope, Stellar. Overall, Stellar was a good light watch and one of the better comedic films that came out this year. If you're looking for something to just turn on, relax, and have a good laugh, I recommend giving this a go. I give the film a TPV of $11. Going into the number 10 spot, the number 10 movie will see the adventure action film that released in January. The Pirates, The Last Royal Treasure The Pirates, The Last Royal Treasure was directed by Kim Jong-un, who also directed The Accidental Detective and starred Kang Ah-ne, Han Yo-ju, Lee Gwang-soo, Kwon Sang-woo, Che Soo-bin, Se-un of EXO, Kim Sung-ho, and Park Ji-wan. A pretty dang solid lineup if you ask me, and the casting was one of the big reasons why I was looking forward to this film. 
The movie is an adventure action film, but comedy plays a huge role in the movie. The synopsis is as follows. Destiny brings the self-proclaimed Korea's head, Luchi, and Heran, the captain of a pirate ship, together on their windless voyage across mountains, seas, and land. Then one day, they learn of royal treasure that disappeared without a trace and that is hidden somewhere in the seas. Thus, they begin their dangerous adventure in search of the massive treasure. However, they aren't the only ones looking for the missing loot. Poong Su, who does anything and everything he needs to to get his way, also jumps into the sea to claim the treasure. Who will be the first to find and become the owner of the missing treasure? Overall, The Pirates The Last Royal Treasure was another fun, light, entertaining adventure movie. Go into it with a light heart. It had good action, comedy, adventure, acting, and visual effects, but once again, I'll emphasize that it's a good, light film. If you're looking for anything more than that, you may be disappointed. I gave the movie a tickle price value of $11. The number 9 movie is the earliest film to have released in 2022, the crime drama The Policeman's Lineage. The Policeman's Lineage was directed by Lee Kyu-man, the same director of Children and Return. The film had a stunning lineup of Cho Jin-ung, Choi Woo-sik, Park Ki-su, Kwon Yeol, and Park Myung-hoon. And if you know me, you know I love crime dramas. And so obviously, I was excited for this one. The detailed synopsis of the policeman's lineage is as follows. Min Jae is a principal the rookie police officer that plays by the books. There's no such thing as bending the rules or doing shady things in his morals. One day, Min Jae is put into the team of Kang Yoon, the leader of the Metropolitan Investigation Unit, as an undercover cop. Kang Yoon's been receiving huge benefits such as a luxury villa, suits, and foreign cars from an unknown source and it's Minja's job to track and monitor Kanyu's movements and actions. However, as Minja continues his role, the two get close and as they're investigating a new drug case, Kanyu finds out Minja's true identity. With Kanyu and his team finding out that there's been a mole in the team and Minja finding out the truth behind the secrets behind Kanyu, situations become unforeseeable for everyone. All in all, the policeman's lineage was a pretty good undercover crime drama. The progression was fast-paced, the actors put on great performances, and the character development and how it sewed into and blended with the narrative was good. However, it wasn't without flaws, and it isn't the best movie in its genre. But then again, the standard for crime dramas and thrillers are pretty dang high in Korean cinema. Generally speaking, it was a good, fun watch. I gave the film a TPV of $11. Moving along, the number 8 film of the movies of the first half of 2022 is a very real movie that released in April, Toxic. Directed by Cho yong sun who also directed No Breathing, Toxic was a highly emotional drama starring the likes of Kim Sang-kyung, Lee Sun-bin, Yoon Kyung-ho, and So young yi The movie was based on real events that took place in Korea, where an airborne disease shook the nation of South Korea, killing numerous innocent citizens. The synopsis is as follows. A deadly disease that appeared with the start of spring and disappeared with the beginning of summer. This mysterious and unknown phenomena had the Korean society and the medical field puzzled with its origin. The airborne murder weapon killed numerous people, including young children, and the struggle to reveal the true nature of this mystery reveals a heart-wrenching story. The criminals behind this evil seemingly evaporated, leaving the victims and their families to suffer on their own. Overall, I thought Toxic was a very powerful movie that makes you reflect and relate. What's sad is that this actually took place and that the victims are still without justice. If you aren't familiar with this incident, I think it'll be that much more eye-opening and a good watch. Very scary to think that this actually took place. The TPV I gave for Toxic was $12. The number 7 film was the highly anticipated, long-awaited action thriller that released the most recently on this list. The Witch Part 2, The Other One. This film was directed by the same director as the first The Witch, Park Kun Jung. Director Park is one of my personal favorites, directing other works such as VIP, The Tiger, Night in Paradise, and of course, New World. The Witch Part 2, The Other One, had a totally new lineup minus a few cameo appearances and smaller parts from the original cast of the first film, including Shin Shia, Park Eun Bin, Seo Eun Soo, Jin Gu, Song Yoo Bin, and Lee Jung Seok. The synopsis of the movie is as follows. After Cha Yoon's disappearance, the secret laboratory responsible for the witch project is attacked and destroyed by unknown, unidentified groups. 
and one girl is the lone survivor of the attack. This girl comes out to the world for the first time following this incident and meets Kyungi. Kyungi welcomes her with warm arms and the girl lives with her on her farmland. Meanwhile, several different people and organizations are after this mysterious girl brewing up a fight that's bigger and more catastrophic than before. Who is this other one? The Witch Part 2 The Other One was a noir film full of action and suspense with sprinkles of humor and rollercoaster of tones. There were quite a lot of gore and blood, and the film ended on another cliffhanger hinting at a third part. You can tell they made the second with the third in mind, and this one felt more like a bridge between 1 and 3. Nothing more, nothing less. I gave the film a ticket price value of $12. Going into the number 6 spot, the number 6 movie goes to another June release film, Broker. Directed by Kore Edai Hirokatsu, who also directed Shoplifters and Like Father Like Son, Broker saw immense interest both domestically and globally, with it being officially selected for one of the top film festivals in the world, Cons. It even had a 12 minute long standing ovation at the event, and I must say, Broker had one of the best cast lineups of K movies released thus far this year, starring Song Kang Ho, Kang Dong Wan, Pe Du Na, Lee Ji Yoon, aka IU, and Lee Ju Young. And in fact, Song Kang Ho received the Best Actor award for his performance in this. The synopsis is as follows. Sangyeon, a man in debt who runs a laundry, and Tongsu, a man who grew up in a nursery school that's now working at a baby box, secretly take a baby from the baby box on a rainy night. However, the mother, Soyoung, unexpectedly returns for the baby, Usong, the next day. When Soyoung tries to report the baby to the police, the two men candidly confess to Soyoung that they took the baby with the excuse that it was in order to find the right people to raise Usong well. Somewhat still uncertain, Soyoung decides to join Sangyeon and Tongsu on the journey to find Usong's new parents. Meanwhile, Detective Sujin and Detective Lee, who were watching the whole process, try to catch the men red-handedly. The unexpected and special journey that began with the baby box begins. All in all, Broker was a calm and soothing movie. It was heartwarming and had lots of cute moments, especially with the baby, such as his eyebrows. And I think it's safe to say that you'll find yourself smiling when watching this film. I also very much enjoyed how the movie and the narrative shifts and changes depending on which character's point of view you are seeing from. Very good character and story development. I gave Broker a TPV of $12. And now, the top 5 Korean movies of 2022 thus far. But before we get into the top 5, I'd just like to give a quick shout out to ExpressVPN. If you would like to access more Korean content such as K-movies and K-dramas, I highly suggest using ExpressVPN to access the Korean Netflix and even other Korean streaming services. By using ExpressVPN, you can bypass your restrictions, meaning you can be from anywhere around the world and access the Korean servers. If you would like to access more Korean content, be sure to sign up for ExpressVPN using my link in the descriptions or expressvpn.com slash iantalk and get 49% off an annual plan plus 3 extra months for free. Better yet, if you sign up and don't like the service, there's a 30 day money back guarantee, meaning you can cancel any time within the first 30 days. Okay, getting back to the list, which movies ranked the highest on my list of favorite Korean films of the first half of 2022? Let's get right into the top 5. Coming in at number 5 of the best Korean movies of the first half of 2022 was a crime action film that released back in January, Special Delivery. Special Delivery was directed by Park Tae-min, who also directed Private Eye and Sondal, The Man Who Sells the River. And the film had a cast lineup of Park So-dam, Song Se-byeok, Kim Hee-sung, Jung Hyun-jun, Yeon Woo-jin, Yeom Hae-ran, and Han Yeon-min. The movie was a crime action flick that gave off a Fast and Furious, Baby Driver, The Transporter vibes. The movie was fairly fast-paced, had good acting, and was overall a really good movie experience. The detailed synopsis of Special Delivery is as follows. Una is a skilled driver that has a 100% success rate in delivering goods. But when she goes out on a special delivery job that she initially was skeptical of, she runs into an unexpected problem. Stuck with a little kid with $30 million on the line and no way of backing out, Una must accomplish her mission with the police, NIS, and a mob after her. Special delivery goes from like a car chase film, to action, to thriller, to feel good, to crime, to humor, but it does all fairly well. 
more so some than others, but still overall good. Good performances by the cast, good action and implementation. Could have been slightly better with the narrative, but all in all, I say this was a good watch. I gave the film a TPV of $12. The fourth movie of the best movies of 2022 thus far goes to the drama film released in March, In Our Prime. In Our Prime was directed by Park dong hoon the same director of Enlightenment Film and Girl by Girl. The film saw the return of the legendary actor Choi min si to the big screens, as well as Kim Dong-hee, Park Byung-un, Park Hye-jun, and Cho yoon ho What's incredible is that this was Kim Dong-hee's feature film debut and his and Choi min Shik's chemistry was great. The synopsis is as follows. Lee yak sung is a genius mathematician who defected from North Korea longing for academic freedom. Hiding his true identity, he now works as a security guard at a high school where the top 1% of South Korea students attend. Due to his coldness and blunt attitude, Lee yak sung is an individual that everyone avoids. Then one day, he meets Han Ji-woo, a student at the school he works at who was on the verge of giving up on math. Following a faithful meeting, ji learns of hak Sung's amazing mathematical gift and begs him to teach him the subject. Upon days of persuading, he's finally able to convince hak Sung to tutor him, and that's how the two special relation begins and their life's turning points are met. Overall, In Our Prime was a good watch with great performances by its cast. It brought a new side to the subject of mathematics and keeps your attention throughout. Definitely a film that I recommend watching. The ticket price value of In Our Prime was $12. Next, the number 3 movie goes to the drama K film that released in January, Kingmaker. Directed by Pyeon Song Yeon, the same director of The Merciless and My PS Partner, Kingmaker starred Seo Gyeonggu and Lee Sung Yoon. The movie wasn't completely based on true events, but it did have some overlapping correlations to real aspects of historical figures. The movie is about a man that joins a presidential candidate's campaign in order to help him win the presidential run, aka make the candidate the quote unquote king, hence kingmaker. The detailed synopsis is as follows. Ji Moon Bom is a politician seeking to change the world. He's joined by So Chang Dae, a genius strategist that implements unseen strategies that brings Ki Moon Bom many wins, eventually making him the presidential candidate to represent his party. The full-fledged march toward the presidential election begins, and Kim Moon Bom, So Chang Dae, and their team do their best to win the election. A fierce election and a fierce relationship of the two men begins. Overall, I really enjoyed the overall tone Kingmaker had. A serious topic, suspenseful moments, and humor to keep it from being dry. All of that gave it its own color and tone. A very solid movie. I gave this movie a ticket price value of $13. And now, just two movies left. The number two film goes to the April released film, I Want to Know Your Parents. I Want to Know Your Parents was directed by Kim Ji-un, who also directed Tower and most recently, Sinkul. The movie was a drama film with hints of comedy, an odd sense of suspense, and a strong ability to capture the audience's attention. Starring Seo Gyeonggu, Chun Woo-hee, Moon Sori, Oh Dar-soo, Go Chang-seok, Kim Hong pa Song Yu-bin, and more, the movie was able to keep me engaged throughout its duration. And from the cast lineup, I think you can get the sense that the movie will have great performances. The synopsis of I Want to Know Your Parents is as follows. Kim go Nu is a student of a prestigious international middle school. One day, he's discovered in an unconscious state near a lake, leaving behind a letter with the names of four fellow students. The son of a hospital president, Do yun Jae, the grandson of a former police commissioner, Park yu Bom the son of a teacher of the international middle school, Chung yi Dun, and the son of lawyer Kang Wo-chang, Kang hang Gyeol. The parents of these alleged perpetrators use all of their power and financial resources to cover up the incident. However, the homeroom teacher, Song jong woo knows of kang letter and informs the mother of kang the truth. With the eyes of the nation on the international middle school, the parents of the four students do all they can to protect their offsprings. When the child becomes a monster, the parent becomes a demon. All in all, I thought I Want to Know Your Parents had good mystery elements and a solid story. I especially loved the performances given by the cast members and enjoyed the twist at the end as well. Altogether, the film was a good watch with a good tone and message. The TPV of the film I Want to Know Your Parents was $13. 
And finally, the number one movie of 2022 so far. The number one movie was by far, without a doubt, the sequel to The Outlaws that released in May, The Roundup. Lee sang yong the director of this film, had his directorial debut with this film, and The Roundup takes place four years after Operation that wiped out Kari Bungdong. The film sees the return of the monster detective Ma Seok-do and Kim chun sos strong team carrying out a strong mission. The film also sees the return of the first movie's cast, as well as some new faces, including Ma dong Seok, aka Don Lee, Son seok Gu, Choi gi Hwa, Park Ji-wan, Ho Dong-won, Ha Jun, and more. The synopsis is as follows. Four years after the operation to wipe out Kari Bong-dong of crooks, the Kim chun sos squad receives a mission to extradite a suspect that fled to Vietnam. The monstrous detective, Ma seok do and the team captain, Chun Il-man, set out to Vietnam for the assignment. On location, the duo senses some suspicious vibes from the suspect and learns of the figure, Kang Hye-sang. Kang Hye-sang is a ruthless criminal who commits merciless crimes, and Detective Ma seok do and Kang Hye-sang set out to end the savage behaviors of Kang Hye-sang. Going from Korea to Vietnam and back to Korea, there's no borders to catching criminals. The Kim chun Seo team are back at it, and the exhilarating and hot-tempered crime-fighting operation unfolds once again. The roundup had good action, suspense, some gore, not too much but similar to that of the previous film, and comedy. The film had me at the edge of my seat, clenching the armrest at the suspenseful action parts, and also chuckling and LOLing the humorous parts. Because the film The Outlaws was such a success, it's hard to live up to the prequel. However, this didn't disappoint. You know it's a good movie when it could be a good movie as a standalone film without the first. If you're a fan of Don Lee, this is a must watch. It's up there in his top movies list. This had the highest ticket price value of the year thus far with $14. And that's it for today's video on the best Korean movies of 2022 so far. There were good movies that came out thus far, but I expect there to be more amazing films to release in the remaining months of the year. Please remember that this list was composed of only movies that I've seen and are biased towards my opinions. If you enjoyed this video and would like more similar content, be sure to like and subscribe, and be sure to check out the full reviews of the movies, linked in the descriptions down below. Be sure to sign up for ExpressVPN using the Ian Talk link to access more Korean movies and support Ian Talk on Patreon for more K movie content. If you have video requests, please let me know by commenting down below. Thank you to everyone that watched till the end, and I'll see you guys in the next one.